Hello, so I'm here tonight to talk to you about some other cardiac disease processes. All of them kind of can get confused together, so I've created this not only just because I love talking about cardiac, but also because it helps to kind of differentiate and understand the differences between these and how we're going to treat them. So like I mentioned, with cardiac disease, everything is intertwined. You know, rarely are you going to find a patient who just has one of these things. They're usually going to have at least two, maybe three, maybe all of them. So let's start, you know, kind of looking over each of these. You know, when I say common cardiac problems, I'm talking about hyperlipidemia, hypertension, coronary artery disease, angina, um, uh, myocardial infarction, heart failure. I could go on and on and on. There's a lot of these that are all related together. So when we're looking at these, we could ask, you know, which one came first? You know, but honestly, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one came first. We're going to treat them, a lot of them similarly, use similar medications, similar education, similar um, nursing interventions. Um, so that's why it's kind of helpful to see how they come together um, and intertwine with each other rather than trying to figure out, well, which one was first? What caused what? You know, um, we're going to need to treat them all the same. Once you have these disease processes, we're really just trying to decrease your risk factors, improve your health, and decrease your risk of um, having complications. So to start with the list, we have hyperlipidemia, which, you know, if you had to break this down as what the problem is, it's too much fat in the lining of the blood vessels. So like in this picture, um, that fat that's in the lining of the blood vessels is causing a narrowing of the blood vessels in the sense that, look, blood can't get by as easily. If blood can't get by as easy, you're going to have reduced blood flow to areas of your body that have these lipids. Um, and when you eat a certain type of diet or don't exercise enough, um, sometimes it's just family predisposition, um, you can form these plaques. And these plaques get worse and worse and worse. And we're going to talk about what happens when they get worse. Um, but what can we do for a patient that has too much, uh, too many lipids or too much fat in the lining of their blood vessels. Well, we can talk to them about their diet, a low sodium diet, a more low fat diet, really avoiding those saturated fats, um, maybe adding in exercise to the mix. I mean, generally when we say with exercise, we want to do exercises that people actually enjoy. We don't want to tell people, yeah, go start running tomorrow. If they hate running, we want them to do things they're going to enjoy, increase their activity, um, and try to decrease some of those risk factors and decrease some of those plaques, decrease themselves from forming more plaques. Um, and then, of course, give them medications. There's medications like statins and other cholesterol, cholesterol medications that can um, decrease your cholesterol production um, and help get rid of some of the cholesterol that you're storing um, in your body. So another cardiac disease is going to be hypertension. If you had a look at the problem for hypertension, you can say there's too much squeeze or too much constriction of the blood vessels. So who cares? What? Who cares if it's squeezed down? Well, if you look at this picture, one, um, that's a lot of resistance that the heart's going to have to work against. Look how Monero the vasoconstricted vessel is versus the others. So it's going to be less space. And remember, all these people have a lot of the same conditions. They have less space, and they also are probably having those plaques in these um, arteries and veins as well. And so it's going to be so hard to get blood through these vessels. So if you already have the plaques, it's going to be made even worse if you're narrow. So what do we do for these patients? Well, a lot of the same things. We're going to um, tell them to go on a low sodium diet, avoid those high fatty foods, um, especially those unhealthy saturated fats, um, get them exercise, get them moving. Um, and more than anything, a lot of these patients are going to need medications. Medication compliance is so key in patients with high blood pressure. Uh, most people, they don't know they have hypertension. Hypertension is not something you feel, um, you know, until it's really, really severe. So a lot of these people don't even know they have a problem. So they're definitely not seeking a solution. So that's why it's so important that people get regular checkups um, and really kind of trend what their blood pressure is so that they can get this problem um, doing better before it gets very worse. So then, you know, the next progressive step, you know, you have these constricted arteries, they're full of fat. Well, then we have our problem of coronary artery disease. And this is specific that that blood, the blood vessels, the arteries that go to the heart itself, um, you know, give them those oxygen and nutrients that the heart needs to pump. 
they've become constricted and blocked. So we have these narrow, you know, full of fat vessels in, uh, around the outside of our heart. And why is this a big deal? Well, this is a big deal because the thing that's getting blood to everything else is now not getting blood flow itself. It's getting reduced blood flow. It's not completely blocked, but it's reduced. Uh, <clears throat> and this can lead to a lot of strain on your heart. So what are we gonna do for these patients? A lot of these patients aren't having any symptoms. It's a lot like the hypertension. They're having this blockage, but this is not angina. This is not where they're having pain. They are just having decreased blood flow to their heart. They are kind of like, you know, in that like ticking time bomb range where something bad could happen, but it hasn't happened yet. So what are we gonna tell them? Same thing, diet, exercise, uh, meds, and this very similar for the diet and exercise. Start increasing their exercise to reduce their risk factors for cardiovascular disease. Um, improve their heart health. Um, diets, you know, kind of getting some of those fats, um, we call it a decrease in their accumulation. Uh, making sure to eat uh, low sodium diets so you don't have extra volume. And remember, because that extra volume is going to be so much harder for the heart to have to pump out because there's all these very narrow vessels. So uh, we can also do medications, and medications are going to be like the stuff to decrease your cholesterol, stuff to decrease your blood pressure so that your heart's not working so hard to get the blood flow that it has to um, the heart itself so that it can pump and get the rest of the organs taken care of. So then there's angina, and you know, we're talking mostly in our class about chronic stable angina. So what's the problem here? So again, we're talking about the blood flow, those, those arteries that go to your heart. But now they've gotten so restricted, restricted that at times, you know, especially when you're active, exercising, up and about, that they get blocked. Now they're only blocked during activity or times when the heart is stressed. And you know why this is? It's because what does the heart do when it's stressed, when it's working hard, or when you're exercising, when you're really, really sick? The blood vessels clamp down. It's that fight or flight reaction. Your body's like, oh my God, a bear's chasing me. So the blood vessels constrict. So remember, here we go back again to these same concepts, this idea you have these narrow arteries are full of fat, full of plaques, so there's reduced blood flow. And so when the people with angina, they have pain, but they only have pain when they're up, moving around, um, you know, doing activities, especially strenuous activities. And that's going to be the really big differentiation between you know, chronic stable angina and coronary artery disease. Remember, coronary artery disease, they don't have symptoms. There's no blockage. They're just that ticking time bomb waiting to happen. This patient, they are starting to have blockages, but they're only having blockages um, when they're having that you know, stress, um, you know, activity, things like that, that's um, you know, increasing that constriction of their blood vessels. Um, solution, um, again, diet and exercise, you know, taking overall better care of our health. Um, but then there's also going to be some medications we're going to give. Remember, I said this is a problem where we're getting really constricted. Because we're getting constricted, um, we're not able to get blood flow. So one of the things that we do for this patient is give them vasodilators, you know, medications that are going to open up those blood vessels and allow for that blood flow to get to the heart. We really need that blood flow to get to the heart so we can get blood flow to the rest of the body. Um, you can see how this is all, you know, kind of working together. <clears throat> uh, we especially tell the patients to maybe, since this is an, something that happens only when they're doing activities, to take their um, vasodilator right before they're doing activity or before they know their heart's going to be stressed. So what comes next? Next is MI or myocardial infarction. And, you know the problem here is again talking about that blockage in your blood vessels but the specifically the blood vessels that go to your heart. It's gotten so severe that the heart cells have begun to die. Um, and so at this point you know we talked about um, coronary artery disease where there's no symptoms, you know, they're just starting to have that, um, you know, buildup of blockages and, you know, that really restricted blood flow, but there's no, you know, symptoms in coronary artery disease. There's no um, official blockages yet. It's really just a narrowing. Um, then we had angina and, you know, with angina, it's like we're starting to have blockages, but we're only having blockages when we're doing activity because our blood vessels get narrow with activity. They're all that vasoconstriction. Well, now we're at the point where an MI, 
um, and that there the blockage is complete. It's a hundred percent blocked to the point where there is cell death. Um, and this patient, you know, it can be at rest. It can be when they're not doing anything. Um, and the same things that worked before, resting, stopping the activity, that's not going to work anymore. They're still going to have that blockage, whether they're working out, doing whatever is stressing them out. They're always going to have that blockage. You know, so this is a lot more serious. So our goal for this patient, our solution is going to be to open that blockage. They are completely 100% blocked. So we need to do procedures or give medications that are going to open up those coronary arteries so that they can have their uh, perfusion returned. Um, and a later thing that can happen because of a variety of new reasons, but all of this, um, you know, a lot of the common commonalities is that a, a lot of these problems are going to cause strain on the heart. It uses extra oxygen, it needs extra help with things. It's super tired, super weak, and that's what heart failure is. There's a whole other, you know, video on heart failure. You're welcome to watch it. Um, but effectively, the problem is the heart's gotten weak. It can't pump blood forward. Um, and so, you know, our solution for that is we need to give the heart a break. So we're going to, um, you know, kind of do some energy conservation techniques, let it rest. I'm um, trying to take that stress off by taking certain medications and um, really decreasing um, that strain that's on the heart. So let's bring all of these interventions together. So um, one thing that we're going to tell them, of course, is diet. So we really want them to limit their sodium so that they're not going to be holding on to and retaining so much water. Um, we also usually tell them to, you know, do the low fat, uh, especially those saturated fats, avoiding a lot of those red meats and um, other things that are going to um, increase that cholesterol um, intake, which is also going to increase that those fatty deposits that they're having in the blood vessels. Um, additionally, we want them to manage outside conditions. So if they're diabetic, making sure their blood sugar is staying out of control. Too much glucose in the blood just breaks down and causes injury to the vessels. And really what that does is that's what leads to a lot of those ruptures of those plaques. So remember going back to hyperlipidemia, all those plaques we saw in the lining of the blood vessels, they're really sensitive. They're just waiting to rupture. So if glucose comes around and starts, you know, really irritating the lining of the blood vessel like it does, it can break open these plaques, which leads to clotting. And then clotting leads to blockages. See, here we go over and over again. So diabetes being managed is so important in heart disease. Um, we want them to do activities tolerated. Like I mentioned before, we want them to do activities that they enjoy, things that um, they're going to want to do. And we also want them to um, do regular activities. So for most cardiac patients, we want them to do, you know, about 30 minutes of activity a day, you know, anywhere from three to five days a week. Um, and usually that's about moderate intensity. Of course, it's going to depend on the patient and their abilities. Um, but um, we definitely want to encourage activity. Um, activity can help to decrease um, their, um, uh, we call it stress, you know, the endorphins that are released during exercise can help to, um, you know, decrease some of that stress that's putting stress on their body and might be contributing to their disease process like their hypertension. Um, but it also can help you to lose weight. Um, and so that weight loss can help a lot on that workload of the heart. But the benefits of exercise could go on and on about. But as a whole, exercise is great for the cardiac patient. Um, not all patients it's going to be appropriate for, but, um, you know, a lot of patients, they just need to modify their activity to their disease process, whether that's taking medications before um, or, you know, kind of spreading out their activities so they're not overworking themselves. Um, you can see I put med compliance in all caps because it's so important that these people are compliant with their medications. We need to do thorough education. A lot of people with these disease processes, they're not having symptoms. Remember, we talked about multiple of them that don't have symptoms. So because of that, where's the motivation to take medication if you're not having symptoms? So we need to explain to people that, you know, even if they're feeling okay, even if their blood pressure is, is normal, keep taking their meds. Those things are, you know, staying better controlled because they're taking their meds. Um, one of the uh, important kind of universal teachings we do for most patients with cardiac disease is teach them to change positions slowly. Um, most of them are going to be on medications that are going to lower their blood pressure. Um, and because of that, they can have what's called orthostatic hypotension. Um, so we want to decrease that um, risk of falls. So we tell them to change positions slowly. 
on keeping ahead of their health. So making sure that they're getting yearly doctor visits, staying up to date with their vaccinations and other um, health problems, managing other issues that they're having, um, really staying on top of things because um, cardiac disease, as you can see, is so progressive. Um, and so getting it while it's early and taking care of, um, you know, all the other conditions together and making sure that you're not just treating one, that you're treating all of the conditions is so important. Um, and then we might also want to teach them how to monitor themselves at home. So their heart rate, their blood pressure, um, things like that, that they'll need to monitor in order to safely take their medications and prevent themselves from having complications. Of course, there's lots and lots of teaching that involves cardiac. These are just some of the basics to get you started. Um, but this will kind of help show all together, you know, what we're trying to do and our priorities for that cardiac patient. Hope it helped.